the response that is based on identifying with cyclical activity is called klesha. That means affliction. So there's five of those. They're called root causes of pain. Okay, the very root of the root causes of pain are, is called avidya, which we've talked about. It means ignorance of this distinction between self and not self. Okay, so that when you've made that mistake, when you're identifying with the temporary, then that's avidya. And then the second one is a I sense, a smita, means kind of ego. And remember that this is a very interesting point in the yoga, the I part, because kaivalya, like I said, is, a, is an individuated state. Okay, that's when you have become the unique person that you're meant to be entirely. You stand in, alone, independent. And so that takes a huge amount of I-ness, right? But it's a different kind of I-ness. It's not small, it's very big. It's a, it's a whole kind of stylistic expression, a very profound sense that you, this little person that you are, is meant to, to show the universe itself, to give, you're meant to view the universe like it's never been seen before. And so that I sense of you is very important, but it also becomes afflicted. It becomes improperly manifested because of identifying with this little I, the temporary I. And so that's a klesha, a root cause of pain. And then comes the really important two. two. One is, they're called raga and dvesha. So they're attachment to pleasure. So sensation comes in through the senses. And then there's a response to that sensation. Ah, nice, like that. <laughs> and then from that, there's wanting more of that pleasure. And so that clouds the mind. That's that cyclical activity it happens. It causes a response that has a toxicity to it. Okay, or the, pleasure, the sensation comes in. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> Lima beans. <laughs> ah! And then there's a reaction to that that also has a toxicity. Okay, and then the last one is this. It's a combination that are together. It's, one is the clinging to this. So the clinging to this body, clinging to this personality, this has to last no matter what. There's a, like a survival urge to make this last, even though it doesn't last. And, in, and with that, the flip side of it is fear. Anything that threatens that potentially, <gasps> I'm afraid. And then my response comes from fear. And that perpetuates a misidentification and creates a toxicity. <gasps> okay, so then yoga is the process of Stopping that flow, stopping the, the, the energy that goes into those root causes of pain to cause a reaction. It's a very important thing. So that's where meditation comes in and equanimity and inward directed consciousness. So when you direct inwards and you begin to observe, you watch reaction instead of blindly reaction. You watch the urge. You watch the eye sense. You watch the fear. You watch these things. Look, see, and you don't move. You, boom, you steady yourself in response to that. Okay, and so that and that steadiness is a bodily steadiness. What Partially. It's a stopping of the body. Because the body... And the mind, that's again, that's a very arbitrary distinction. It's not separate. Your body is your mind. Your mind is your body. And so when you do these things, 
without <laughs> noticing. Those are, that's vritti activity. That's reaction to raga, some pleasure, a reaction to pain or to fear. And so you stop the body. It's a very obvious thing to stop. Talk. That's asana. And then with pranayama, see, and that's why the training, it takes so much training to actually bring the body to a stillness. And so much movement. All this vinyasa, just to stop the body. <laughs> because if you just simply try to stop it, no, the default setting is full of unseen, unexperienced mind activity, body activity. You don't even know it's happening. And so you have to actually churn, pull energy out of dormancy, make it flow in the body in order to stop it. <laughs>